you know, some teams had really good drafts. Some teams had really bad drafts. But no matter what, just be glad that you're not a Houston Texans fan. A lot of teams pooped the bed this draft. A lot. A lot of teams were looking at their big boards and absolutely just pissed down their leg. It's actually kind of funny. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the five worst teams. We're going to talk about from five to one. Um, we're going to start with the Steelers. I, they actually didn't have a horrible draft, but with the loss of Villanueva, the loss of Pouncey, you didn't take an O lineman until the third round. Not till the third round. In the first round, you took Najee Harris, which I I think he'll be the, very the good. The fact of the matter is that they need an offensive line to protect an aging and very unathletic Big Ben. Big Ben, his offseason is doing yoga for 10 minutes and then drinking a 12-pack of cold ones. You know, Lagunitas or something. He seems like a heavy beer kind of guy. Absolutely. And he's an aging quarterback. And they have maybe one more shot. So why aren't you going to protect him? They took Pat Fryermuth in the second round, which maybe he's a good pick if their line was solid. And maybe he'll help block. But that's a very optimistic way to look at a tight end you took in the second round. Uh, you had I, no line. And on top of it, I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to discredit Najee Harris. Because Najee Harris, I think that he was probably the best running back in the draft. I agree. He was the best running back in the draft. Great story. I think that his story of he because uh, he was in an orphanage. He was in an orphanage. That story is amazing. He held his draft story in that orphanage that that he grew up in. But thing is, is he's not a generational talent. He's a good running back that'll be that'll be a contributor. But they need help all over the place on the offensive line. Getting a running back in the first round who you might have maybe been able to get out in the, in the second round, but there were other good running backs you could have gotten too. It wasn't a good choice. Simply was not a good choice. It was a big risk. He wasn't a McCaffrey style running back who's going to get you seventeen hundred yards a season. It was. It was. It was just weird. It was just really weird. Well, well, he's not the missing piece. You know what I mean? He's, he's not Le'Veon. He's not Le'Veon. Well, he's not the missing piece. Like that's the thing is you're not the missing piece. It's not like you just had one piece and you're like, and now we're ready. That's not it. It's not like the Niners. It's not like that. So not at all. I just think they really overlooked a lot of needs. Um, Steelers are actually on the verge of a rebuild. I agree with that. They're on the ver- verge of a rebuild. The next team we're going to talk about is the Raiders because they all, dude, the last few drafts they've had, it seems like they almost have a competition with people where they act like they know what everyone else doesn't know, but that has literally translated 0% onto the field of the max. Can, can I add on to that? Sure. I think that John Gruden has only made that worse. I agree. John Gruden is the kind of guy that he sees a guy and regardless of what he's actually done in college, he just says, I like that guy. A Mike Glennon type guy. Glennon. Glennon. That's that's literally the type of guys that he goes for. He loves Nathan Peterman. And and some things I'll say, I actually really like Alex Weatherwood. He's a big, very athletic guy. But at 17 with Zayman Collins still on the board and a horrific defense. You also took Malcolm Kuntz, out of the defensive end out of Buffalo in the third round. The that guy only was a- good thing about that defense is Jonathan Abrams. And that guy was drafted in the third round. He used to go till the seventh. Maybe and, and undrafted. The, is this this is his third year? Third year? No, Mal- oh, John, yeah, Abr- I think yeah. so. I don't this know. Is no, this third is his fourth, year. I think. Fourth year. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they always draft like someone else knows, like they know something else no one else knows, and that's never happened. And then after that, they took. They don't draft well. They, they don't took, draft well. Yeah, and they took three fucking safeties, dude. They signed three Carl, safeties. They signed three Carl safeties, Joseph. Dude. They signed Jonathan Abrams. <laughs> so bad. And then they drafted Trevon Morgan in the second round. They drafted, How about a corner? Yeah, and then they drafted a safety corner? in the third round, and then they drafted another safety in the fourth round. And it was fucking stupid, dude, because you're looking at your defense. You're like, well, we need defense, so take all one position. That's fucking dumb, the, dude. The, I'd say probably the, the position they needed most in their defense was corner. They didn't do that till the fifth you, round. You have two starting safeties, and you drafted three fucking safeties. Three, sa- three. That's, why that's three? Not even, I, you don't, like, I don't Why care. would you draft you that don't. many of any position in the draft, let alone the position that you don't need? It, it's the dumbest thing ever. It's the most Raiders thing. I, you gotta wonder what you know. Mike Davis is going through his mind. I, yeah, I agree. All right, and moving on though. All right, so we got the Seahawks. We're next. gonna talk about the Seahawks next. So the reason we're gonna talk about the Seahawks is because they actually didn't have a pick till the second round, but in the sixth round they took an offensive lineman, Stone Forsythe. Dude, dude, the Seahawks are honestly they're fucking stupid, dude. Yeah, they're, they're stupid. They're fucking dumb. They're honestly dumb, dude. They had huge, ro- they had huge holes in the roster, and they had very few picks to solve them, and they didn't do a good job of it. I agree. 
They and did not do a good job. They took a receiver in the second round. They're already stacked at the position. They had so many needs on both sides of their defensive can and offensive I, line. Uh, can I play semi-devil's advocate? Is sure. that Here's the thing. Minus DK and Tyler Lockett, there's a giant drop-off in the receivers. Like There's a really big drop-off. How many great receivers do you need? How many Pro Bowl receivers do you need on your on the same roster? That's fair. Yeah, right? That's like fair. That's my only point is like... Mm-hmm. That wasn't even close to your biggest fucking need. Not even close. It was their their best dude, have, offensive lineman is thirty six. Do you have a fucking generational talent at quarterback that's saying, "Hey man, if you could protect me, I won't like I won't leave. Like I just need some help." And you don't protect him. Like you're literally going out of your way to piss this guy off even more. I don't know what you're thinking. He's a consistent top five quarterback. Yeah, every year he's a top five quarterback. Every, every year he's a top five quarterback since he's been in the NFL. It's so freaking dumb because there's he hasn't asked for much, and he's a great guy. Yeah, and there's no reason that that line shouldn't be absolutely phenomenal by now, dude. The guy was drafted in 2012, and you still haven't put a good line around him. What the fuck are you thinking? R- Russell's Pete not a you're he's not a pre- he's not a prima donna. He is not a prima donna by any means, and I, I really feel that. Yeah, he's a good guy. Dwayne Brown is 36 and he's probably their best offensive lineman, their left tackle. Yeah, he's fucking That's their best that, that that's their best bet right now yeah. on offensive line. They got one offensive lineman, a guard, which I any offensive lineman is valuable, but a guard is the least valuable of your offensive line. You didn't get one to the 5th round. You got one offensive lineman in the entire draft. That was dumb. That was straight up dumb. The, 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 like uh, uh, it's just I don't want to say it's sad because like, do I have sympathy so for the good. Seahawks? Yeah. Not whatsoever. Like I'd be like, Oh, Pete Carroll, you poor person. Yeah. Yeah. Literally zero sympathy, but yeah, they're no dumb though. The, the fact of the matter very, is that they're being extremely and center, uh, their center. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name, but Ethan Pochich, I think serviceable at best. He's whatever. Uh, you know, they got, uh, and then uh, they, they drafted, uh, what was it? So Jordan Brooks is the guy, the linebacker. They yeah, got last out year, of, first round. Out of, yeah, out of Texas Tech. Nothing. Out of, out of Texas Tech. You know, it's like. They've done nothing. And they reach all the time. And it's really annoying because you, the guy is just asking for some linemen. Dude, you could have drafted a guy in the second round and he would have been happy. Like, that's all you had to do. All right, so now we're going to get into the really bad teams. The last two. We're going to talk about the two. Bengals the specifically last first. Really, really so bad. I'm going to, I'm just going to say it. Joe Burrow's knee. If you've seen the surgery scar, you understand how bad this surgery is. Dude, he tore several ligaments in his knee. And you, t- you took Jonah Williams last year. You have Billy Price, who you took two years ago, three years ago at the first round, who fucking sucks, by the way. He started 18 games in three seasons. And then you have Jonah Williams, who you took, you know, in the first round and he's good, but he's, I mean, like he's been hurt and like, it's been whatever. And like, you really don't have a line whatsoever. And Suell's on the board and you don't take him. You take fucking Jamar chase when you already have Tyler board, Tyler Boyd and T Higgins. I mean, they took Jonah Williams. You have a right-handed quarterback who better to protect him than Penny. Sewell, who's one of the best offensive linemen to come out of the draft since who even knows how long. And, He's a generational well, John, talent. Jonah Williams is so-so. Billy Price hasn't panned out. They brought in Riley Reef, but that's nowhere near enough. Joe Burrow's no, still going to struggle to stay absolutely up, not. upright. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. I, I, I'm going to preface this with the fact that the Bengals actually drafted pretty well in, I would say, third round and on. But their first two picks were so bad that I feel like it completely offset the rest of their picks. A lot of people say, oh, well, your first round pick, you don't know if they're going to pan out and being very good. But chances are your first round pick is going to be better than your later round picks. And so you can make that exact same argument about the later round picks. Your first round picks are most important one. Yes. Especially if you have a chance to get a left tackle for a quarterback. Joe Burrow, He, if you just don't Andrew Luck him, he can be a quarterback for your team for 10 plus years. He can take you to the playoffs and actually have a competitive team. If you, He's really good. Exactly. He's really good. And he's a cool guy. He's not going to start drama off the field. He's a very... He's a very fittable franchise quarterback. Yeah, I, I would uh, like. I, I mean, as a Chargers fan, I'm happy we have Herbert. But if we had Joe Burrow, I would be very okay with that. Yeah. Joe Burrow's awesome. Let's talk about the worst draft. And bum, honestly, bum, bum. it wasn't even really their fault. I mean, it's 100 percent their fault. But it's not. It's even almost. Really their fault. It's almost like a little sad and pathetic to t- even talk about them because of how abysmal this organization is. The Texans. You guys, congrats, because you guys have surpassed the Lions, the Browns, the Jets as the most incompetent organization in the NFL. So you know what? You did it. And to add on to that, in two years. 
dude in well, two years yeah, they did they that. had a actually a really good team that they were like literally beating the chiefs 21 to what like 7 24 I, I, I would say d hop is a top almost the best receiver in the nfl he's top two he's a, he's, and two. he's the best deep threat in the I nfl agree. i he's, agree he, he like and you had deshaun watson uh, that's a whole thing well, uh but he's a top seven quarterback well, he's he's really good. Let's and, talk. Let's talk about their draft first, uh, mm-hmm. because they didn't have a pick till the third round. My, with, my point is that all of this ties in oh, yeah. because they lost a lot of their draft well, yeah. picks because they traded away these these instrumental it's, people. Exactly. Their team. Yeah, and 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 and, and, and the Laramie Tunsil thing was yeah. it, which was so stupid. Yeah. Well, you traded you know two first round. Do you want to do you want to give like a brief synopsis? Of yeah. What you trade a, two, you trade three first. I mean, total the Dolphins got three first rounders, like two fourths. Three thirds and a two seconds. And Larry Tunsil is the left tackle that is. He's he's good. He's he's pretty good. Um, but he's not worth that. Um, the Texans didn't have a pick till the third round, and with a ton of needs, they took Davis Mills out of Stanford, the QB. You have Deshaun Watson. If you truly feel like he's staying, and you truly feel like he's going to play this year, like you fucking said, then why did you draft a quarterback? You're liars. That's what you are. You've been liars. And you had so many different needs, and you took a player at your strongest position. I your understand actions the situation. are not matching your words. And I, your actions are not matching your words. Exactly. And and so like that's what I I just really dislike that. It's just like just be upfront. Like you don't have to tell us everything, but don't lie blatantly. It's annoying. I mean, it kind of seems like that's their mo. That that's what the Texans love to do. They, it's you know they needed everything. They they let's be real. Deshaun Watson's not playing for the Texans. Yeah, fucking and, Cal. And this week there's already started to kind of be noise about teams that Deshaun Watson could be going to, which, you know, later on, th- th- this is going to be a whole thing, obviously. But, dude, they need a QB. They need pass rushers. Fuck. They need a head coach. They need a GM. <laughs> they need an owner. Bro, they need to like, tear it down. They, they need to tear it down. New like, roster name, Houston, new name and everything. Houston sports. Like, God, you guys got the Astros. Like, what the fuck are you guys even doing in Houston? What a horrible place. Yeah. What a horrible place. I'm sorry if we have any followers in Houston, but get your fucking franchises together. But these five teams drafted like so. Absolute caca. And so uh, with that said, thank you for watching. If you are, I don't know why you are. Uh, so go ahead and follow us on. We have a Twitter. We have a TikTok. Spotify. Fuck. We got an Instagram. Yeah. Official as fuck here on Trick Coaches. Check us out. Thank you. Thank you.